Good morning. My name is Jeff Curlo, and I want to thank my Ojo, Mr. Mojo Grip, for his uh, visit this morning to our facility. This is, uh, as they used to say on the TV show, where the magic happens. <laughs> so we are Revelero, both my partner John Harvey and myself, Jeff Curlo, and we're developing presently, latest as a misnomer, in that the design is actually 25 years old, but we're finally getting around to it. So. We're going to give uh, you folks a tour around our shop and uh, let Mike uh, expose our activities to the world. Okay, so what, what do we have here? This, this mic is the, the, the actual pattern, three-dimensional pattern that's generated from initially line drawings, paper drawings, turned into a CAD three-dimensional model, and that drives uh, a five-axis CNC machine, which turns a big block of foam, metal, wood, whatever your material of choice is, into the three-dimensional article matching the, the contours of the, the CAD model. That, uh, that, uh, the tool path is generated from. If we walk around the corner here, we can show you the big machine that actually takes that CAD image through the use of a generated tool path and turns that big block of whatever material into the shape you just saw a second ago. This machine is capable of cutting uh, or having a cutting envelope that is approximately 98 inches by 138 inches by roughly 30 inches tall. So within that envelope, uh, you can machine you know, any number of shapes. And the machine employs five axes, so it uh, can literally reproduce almost any shape imaginable. And I'll let John give you a little, uh, little insight into uh, what drives that big machine over there, oh. what it takes to so turn. This so is, this is what I guess the main center unit to control that yeah the machine control center yeah okay it starts like um like jeff said earlier he started with a quarter scale uh -huh. hand-built model that was scanned okay and that data came into the computer then that data was manipulated um and then sectioned out and then that data was then turned into a machine pass for the cutter that was that part was brought over into this machine we bring that file up stick a big chunk of foam in there like as big as the uh, aircraft itself Oh, wow. And yeah, as you can see over here, this plug. Okay. That started as a large block of foam. Wow. And then a tool bit. Oh, hang on. I'm going to show you. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and a tool bit this big, I'm talking huge, went in there. And basically, turned cut big... that big block of foam into the shape of the aircraft. Wow. Okay. And put a hard skin on it, and then release it, and then we make the molds from those things. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So, so over here, a smaller block of, in this case, MDF, which is a, a wood, a processed wood material, oh. was laminated together and then put under the machine, and these are the machine molds. In this case, it's what we refer to as a male mold. You mold over the outside of it, and this creates the side console panels right and left side of the cockpit seat cool. assembly. And this is the same material you said would be on the Talon this, model? Th well, yeah, this is, this is fiberglass, similar to what would be employed in the airframe of the Talon model, which is the lower-priced version, the, the most affordable version of the kit. The upper two projects, the Striker and, or pr products, Striker and Voodoo are all carbon fiber airframe. Okay. So over in this section, you know, we'll start out with, you know, raw chunks of billet aluminum. Okay. We have, for instance, the, uh, all the prints that were created uh, in SolidWorks on the computer. Okay. Based off of the large assembly. And then, for instance, this smaller CNC machine, this would be a tool that goes into the vise. And then raw stock would then be bolted to the top of it. And then we make, for instance, this is a front hinge bracket for the nose gear door. Wow, OK. 
So yeah, we produce all our metallic components in-house. So this is where we do all our turn components. Things that are generally round get done on the lathe. Things that are generally square get done on the mill. Uh, this is a CNC router. It does things that are primarily flat or, or very short and large. Uh, we do a lot of drill jigs on here. Like, how, how do you even, because I'm just, this is like all complex stuff to me. Like, you start, you say you start with the with the sketch or something from the computer yeah. or that you need to cut out. Mm -hmm. And then how do you even go about getting the right equipment to to do all these things? I'm guessing you both oh. have a lot of experience. Yeah, with, yeah. We I, kinda, I'm just yeah. trying to get into like yeah. how, how does that, all of that happen? When yeah, you know, well, it's, 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 a, you know, it's a function of, of observing other industries, seeing what kind of technology you can bring into what we do, crossover. Uh, so there's an element of that. There's an element of just plain hands-on, been there, done it. Right. Uh, yeah. And Working there's an element of, of smart, other smart people as you grow up. Like right. Jeff and I started as kids. We're, you know, Jeff's pushing, you know, 60. I'm pushing <laughs> 60. So between us, we've almost got literally a hundred years of hands-on wow. experience of making something from nothing okay yeah we're, we're both uh, what in various hobbies are referred to as scratch builders it's we don't awesome. we, we don't grab a box and shake out parts someone else created we uh, we make the parts that then require the box so that someone else can <laughs> like for instance behind the dust collector for this there's a large oven that i built from scratch to be able to cook our composite parts up to 300 degrees when necessary wow <laughs> you know, it's custom size, computer control, mm -hmm. pretty awesome, right? And I, I think that's that's one of the things I guess as an end customer or just an enthusiast, like we don't see all this yeah, all stuff, the the all, yeah, all this stuff that has to come together just right. to like make one part or one right. component work. And these are things you, as a manufacturer, think about. Like, okay, do we outsource this? If we do, what about the time frame and right. how it works with the business? Right. And you guys are creating a lot of what you're doing here yeah. in-house. which It helps which, us uh, uh, maintain quality, too. Right. right. You know, that's the big thing. Okay. But having, having the experience makes you a better judge of the, the, you know, the validity or viability of outsourcing. Okay. And in the case of prototyping, it pretty much always makes the most sense to keep it in-house. So this is, a, this is wood. What part of, like, what do you use this for oh, that yeah, goes into the... Let me show you. Primarily pa pattern making, but also sometimes yeah. short use, uh, limited use fixtures. Line. So, for instance, uh, five days before Oshkosh, uh, we got an engine in from D-Motor. We had no engine mount. Okay, but I'll show you later on the CAD. I had the CAD model for the engine in our airframe. I was able to mate them up and then create the engine mount in between. So we used the CNC router then to produce the pattern from which the engine mount was built up with. In other words, this held all the chrome molly tubes in place while they were being welded. Jigged it up for welding. Yep. So this guy went uh, basically here. See, that's top. That's top. So this guy was there. So we had legs coming up to here, legs coming up to here, the piece of chrome molly here. So that this held all those loose pieces accurately in place to so represent the engine mount and the firewall. So this oh, got all wow. welded up. And then when you go over there, you can see the actual engine mount that came out of this fixture. So that's, right, that's what we use. So, you know, a lot of companies, like a big company, would send the print down to the floor. They'd make this all out of steel or aluminum. Very expensive. Right. Take time to build. I knocked this out in 20 minutes wow. for next to nothing. And it's still super accurate. Now, I'm only going to make one, two, or three out of it. The dedicated tool will be metallic. But, right. but this is how we can make prototypes like that. It's awesome. It's this one right here? Yep. The white. Wow. So this, this is what was built. Yeah, so these were the legs. So this uh, right here was the upper wood piece that established this plane. And the lower wood piece established the plane that represents That's the firewall. Wow. And those were the legs that were held in place by that fixture while it got welded. Stuff. And as John said, you know, 20 minutes as opposed to mailing right. out a thing for a quote, accepting the quote, giving them the go-ahead, them putting right. it in their schedule. It could be a right. week, week, two weeks, two weeks, three weeks later. later. And right. then and then could get it in here and find out, oh, I already had a revision change. <laughs> Something you know, or modified. it came back with, you know, it was off 20,000s because it didn't pass through, you know, it didn't get 
it snuck through their QC. So now our program's down for three weeks instead because, of 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Makes sense. And how do you make these? Uh, these the canopy? Uh, yeah, the canopy yeah. from the... Those presently uh, is the only item that we've had made out of our our four walls and it's being okay. done by a friend of mine Jeff Rogers up at Airplane Plastics in Ohio okay and Jeff is, a, is an artisan when it comes to shaping plastics uh, such as acrylic or plexiglass the trade name or Lexan okay well that brings up a good point the thickness is different for each model like a talon is going to be around eighth inch thick because of the lower speeds. The striker mm -hmm. will be more likely quarter inch, and then the Voodoo pushing 400 miles an hour with the twin engine will most likely be a three eighths thick okay. canopy. Makes sense. All the pressure on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, last question for builders. So, for builders right now, uh, we've talked about you know they either they can build on their own or come here. Now you've given me just an insight of how you make the materials to build this thing. So when a builder puts in an order or whatever have you, how would the process typically go? You just start making all the the build materials from here, or yeah, how, at how some you... point in the future, obviously once a. a, 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 a uh, absorption rate is identified how many kits we're selling per month you know we'll, we'll start to then inventory kits on, on you know on a shelf if you were ready to ship out okay. but initially yeah you, you take the order you take a deposit to secure the order that it's you know that it's definite and at that point we begin to, to mold all the composite pieces John you know presently in-house making all the metal pieces and weldments and such Wow and then assemble of that kit in the early stages, as we indicated earlier talking with you, Mike, you know, we prefer to likely for the first 10 units tr try as much as possible to keep the, the building program in-house where we can oversee, but also more importantly get feedback from the different people. Everybody has a different perspective, different level of experience, mm -hmm. and we really like to, 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 to employ a broad spectrum of people that have never built before and people with tons of experience to help us refine the process and also produce a very clear and concise assembly manual. We have presently the, the X Project or Revel Aero. You can find it both way or by both descriptions on Facebook. And then as well, we have our own website, which is www.revelero.com.